Hi, you guys. Let me just, uh, sorry about the delay there. And I'm hoping that, I'm hoping <laughs> that it's working today. I'm getting all kinds of crazy messages from uh, YouTube telling me that things are bad. Uh, you know, turn the preview on. Uh, now, let me see here. My Even my preview is not showing me. So it says an error occurred. <laughs> Please try this again. All right, so I guess I need to find out if you can hear me or see me because I can see me in the broadcast. I can see the, the, the cameras on, but I do not see it on YouTube. So um, somebody tell me, can you see me? <clears throat> I guess I better need to, hey, George, can you see me? Can you hear me or see me, I guess is the thing. Uh, all right, so no broadcast alert. All right, CSI, hello. George, let me know. Can you see and hear me? Question mark. Oh, great, it's not even typing. Uh, yes, you can hear and see you. Okay. Well, uh, hey, Mike, nice to have you here today. Um, I, it's really strange because usually there's a preview image here. I'm just, you know, I can actually look at myself as you would see me, and it's not showing up today. So uh, according to uh, you, you guys, you can see and hear me, so thank you. Uh, George, nice to see you. Carla? Hi, Subia. Hey, Subia, nice to have you with us today. Um, Dana, nice to have you here today. Uh, the R&B Rocka. <laughs> okay, yeah, good. Um, the R&B Rocks. So I can see and hear you. Thank you. All right, you guys. So today the, the broadcast is going to be um, something that we, in our day today, in our world today, uh, as, as opposed to when I was young, you learn to sing a lot. You get a lot of information online. And that means you're kind of on your own much of the time. So today's Power to Sing Live number 130, How to Practice Singing Without a Teacher, is really, really important discussion to have. And, and so there's several things that came up this week that I wanted to share with you that might help you. So let me know. Um, so we know practice is critical. And so today we're going to talk about tips uh, to follow in order to um, may, maybe get the most from your from practicing singing, even if you don't have a teacher, you know that you're working with live. I know you're you follow me and you're you know you're watching the things that we do, and you're you know listening to videos and a lot of interaction online and things like that. But um, it's still different than actually, you know, taking a lesson, listening to the teacher, watching the replay, listening to the, you know, your lesson and so forth. So we're going to talk about that. So let me know right now, just in the comments below, if you're just joining us or if you're joining us later, please comment below. Are you studying with the teacher? Do you, or do you practice, you know, do you practice on your own? Yes or no? Do you practice on your own? Yes, I practice on my own without the aid of a teacher. Just let me know. I really would like to hear, and you can just say yes or no to that question. You're practicing without the aid of a teacher. Um, and that just means, you know, are you taking lessons and getting feedback so that you, you kind of have some direction? So <clears throat> even in the best of the circumstances, <clears throat> my wife told me I have a scratchy voice today, so even the best of circumstances, I've list, you know, I always record my voice lesson. And I go into my lesson, um, and this is historically, I mean, not just once, but many times I've taken lessons. And I'm really trying to focus, you know, on learning and, and f be in the moment. And, and, um, and I'll, I mean, one time, <laughs> I remember I was taking a lesson and, and I was doing the exercise and she was saying, Mum, mum, mum. Uh, she was playing mum, 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 and I was singing it, and she said mum, 
mum. And I'm thinking, I'm singing mum. Mum, 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 mum. She says, mum, mum. <laughs> anyway, when I got done with the lesson and played it back, I'm singing mum, 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 mum. I was singing kind of towards ma'am. And, and that's why she kept saying mum, mum. And it was, it shocked me. I just knew I was doing it right. And as a result, I'd learned that I'm not always hearing exactly what I'm doing. Anybody had that experience? So we're going to talk today about uh, specific tips on, on exactly you know, what, what to do in practice when, when you're on your own to, uh, to make it effective and so that you get some help. The comment from um, CSI, what a great subject. Thanks for talking about it. And, th and look, you guys, if you've got questions right now, please enter those right here. Uh, George says, no teacher. Okay, practices on his own. This is the reality of today's world. Um, Carla uh, studies with a teacher. CSI practice every day on my own. I took eight lessons and I use those videos for direction. Uh, and that's, that's a help. Subia, this topic is important for me as I practice without a teacher. Um, I practice on my own and, and Dana, Dana says I practice on my own after getting direction and tailored exercises from a teacher. Great, and I think that that's, that's awesome. But knowing my experience myself, um, has anybody else done that? You know, you think you're doing it one way and you get start listening to your lesson and it's like, oh my gosh, I wasn't doing it at all, you know, or not nearly as well as I thought, or I was not pronouncing the vowel right or something, you know, let me know. So um, for those of you who are practicing on your own, and look, you know, regardless of whether, really, regardless of whether you're studying with a teacher, you go home and you practice by yourself and they're not listening to you. So how do we make those experiences that we're gaining, that we're, you know, for, we're hearing, seeing online and then we go practice it, or maybe we're taking lessons from a teacher and we go practice it. How do we derive the most benefit from our practice sessions and, and what can we do to make them effective? Um, hi, La, La, uh, Landa, nice to have you with us, joining us again. Nice to have you back this week. Okay, so I've already shared with you the fact that I learned that um, I was not <laughs> I was not listening very well to myself. So I'm going to put my little name up here. Hi, everybody. I'm Chuck. <laughs> um, and so, so what do I do if I do if I'm that poor with my in my live lessons, how poor am I practicing on my own? Now let's be realistic here. Some of these tips that I'm going to give you, <clears throat> it doesn't really make sense to do them every, well, it's just laborious to do this every day. But let me, let me suggest one of the most powerful, maybe the number one practice that I followed and I follow when I'm really trying to create a change in my own voice is recording my own practice. Does that sound strange? Have you ever recorded your own practice? You, any of you, whether you're studying with a teacher or not, have you ever recorded yourself practicing? Let me know. Uh, Hussein says, uh, hi, I've been singing and practicing mixed voice for 10 years now. Started when I was 13 years old, found Brett Manning first, then Riggs, uh, Per Bristow, now you. I developed mostly through you. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad you're with us today. Uh, Hussein, thanks for joining us. Mark Schultz says, hi, Chuck, I've, been, I've taken some lessons through the years. Definitely a great topic. It is hard to hear yourself at times. So yes, on pronunciation, teachers help a lot being able to hear for you. We, it does help us, it does help to have another ear listening, an outside ear, because even when we're face to face, <laughs> you know, and someone demonstrates, 
Like I explained, ma, ma, and I'm singing ma, ma. <laughs> she said to me, she said, you tend, you're, you tend to be a little open. Guess what my vocal type is, you guys? Pull chest high larynx. I tend to, I tend to, the, I tended to spread the vowels, and maybe I still do. Um, so Carla Diaz says, my teacher made made me record today less today's lesson for me to study at home. Yeah, now I'm not just saying record your lesson with the teacher. I'm saying, Dar Carla, when you go home and you start practicing, I suggest turning on your recorder, whether it's your phone or if you have a, I have a, this, uh, I have this MP3 Tascam that I use and I've loved that. I've had it now for 11 years and it is a dynamite recorder. I turn that on while I'm practicing at home. Okay. Anybody done that? Uh, Saints has never actually taken a vocal lesson before. Okay, so this is really applicable, especially for those who are learning online through online videos and so forth. Um, Saints says all the time. Uh, Landis says never. George, no, I've not recorded my practice. And so uh, when you say how, George, uh, as I mentioned here, I record myself on my own uh, MP3 recorder, my Tascam, and it's called GR1. It's an old machine. I don't think they make them anymore, but they've re Tascam has some great recorders. And they're, this is like 350 bucks 10 years ago or 11 years ago. Um, but it's paid tremendous dividends. Um, I... Um, Here's how it works. I had my lesson playing on. Uh, yeah, I, I took my. I took a. You know, I, I took my lesson. I took. Um, I recorded it on on this machine. Then I uploaded it to YouTube, or sorry, not to YouTube, to um, iTunes, whatever, whatever, uh, whatever music program you have. Upload your your lesson. Um, if you have a lesson and then play it on your iTunes or play it on your music channel <clears throat> and then rec and then turn on your phone and put it in, you know, record it, record your, le record yourself practicing your lesson on the phone. Or if you're watching videos here online, if you're watching some of mine or you're practicing the exercises for pull chest high larynx, for example, you, you've gone to PowerToSing.com, you've gone down to the description below in this video, and you've gotten your, uh, the PDF to get, get your vocal type. And I recommend you do that. If you haven't done that, get the PDF to get your vocal type. You've gone, you've taken the test. <coughs> <coughs> My wife is right. I've got a scratch today. And um, you found your vocal type. And now you can download the exercises specifically for your vocal type. Now, when you practice, you watch those exercises, you watch the demonstrations that I'm giving you, and, uh, and then you can download the, uh, there are exercises there that you can practice without me singing, but they're the exact things that I just showed you on the video. Now, when you practice those, record yourself practicing them, okay? Why does that make a difference? What do you think? Practice yourself doing the exercise and then, sorry, practice yourself, record yourself practicing the exercises. And then the important step is listen to the recording. Listen to the recording of you practicing the song. Um, and let me turn this thing off. So if you'll listen to yourself record uh, practicing the song or practicing the exercises, guess what you're going to find out? You're going to hear, I'm going to fix this camera a little bit. You're going to hear whether you're doing the exercises as you think you are. Does that make sense? So in other words, by practicing the exercises, as you, you think they're supposed to be done. And 
recording that and then listening to your recording, you're going to discover some things. You're going to discover, in fact, that you don't sound nearly as close to the demonstration as you thought you were. You're going to hear that you're actually still uh, pulling chest a little bit, or you're, you're lighter or breathier than you thought you were, or um, your, you know, your, your vowel is not as, as correct as you expected it to be. So Cardic 7 says, just recently I've taken my first singing lesson since I started learning two years ago, and it turned out that my throat tenses when I get higher due to lack of proper airflow. I never noticed that. Okay, good. Mark says, yes, I record myself. It helps, it helps one get used to their voice, but also to hear the likes and dislikes of one's voice and how changing things can help one get uh, voice sounding to one's liking. Yeah, so, so for example, if you are doing the exercises for uh, nay, 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 let's just say, um, and you're saying, nay, 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 you think you're saying that, but you play back, you, you record your session and you play it back and you're saying, nay, 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 nay. Don't be surprised if that happens. You think you're doing it one way and in reality, when you listen back, you're doing something different. So this is the point. By getting that feedback on what you're doing and comparing that to the way it's supposed to sound off the video that you've watched, you can begin to correct yourself. This is why this is so powerful when you're doing it on your own. Because how, who's going to correct you? How are you going to self-correct? You've got to compare what you're doing to the standard, whatever that standard is. Now, for the ladies, it's a little bit more challenging if you're following me because I'm singing in a lower key. But um, I try and demonstrate it a little bit in the, in the ladies' octaves. So if, if the ladies are singing, nay, 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 any of those things, I can at least do a little bit of a demonstrating. But if the ladies are saying, nay, 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 you know, if they start pulling, they won't know that unless they listen, they record their practice session and listen back. So I guess rule number one, when you're practicing on your own, I don't know if you have to do this every day, but I would say if you want to, pra if you want to progress rapidly, the more you listen to your practicing and compare it to uh, who you're listening to in a, in a video or um, a, a recording that you have, if you'll listen and compare what you're doing, what you, th you know, in your practice to what you're trying to, um, trying to duplicate from a teacher in a, in a video, you're going to be able to hear a difference and self-correct. Okay. Does that make sense? Is that uh, because this is going to be a something that's going to have a big impact on your self-correction and self-progress as you're learning online. You become your own teacher. Uh, Mark Schultz says Chuck is a low vo uh, is a low voice singer that can sing Art Garfunkel songs. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things. Yeah, I can get down here, but <laughs> like a bridge over. <laughs> Um, anyway, Gertie, Charles, Dory. Hi, I've recorded myself at times. I think it's the closest you'll ever get to getting an objective view of your own voice. Perfect, uh, perfect observation, uh, Gertie. I totally agree. Let me tell you a story, and this is why this is this maybe had more impact on my learning than anything I've ever done, and it happened after I took a lesson. And I had it recorded. I knew something had happened positively in the lesson, and uh, I've played it. I've played it over and over again so many times. I've listened to that lesson so many times that I almost I have portions of it 
of the verbiage of my teacher memorized. <laughs> but we were doing ma 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 ma. This is like in the middle of the lesson. Ma 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 ma. And all of a sudden, it's like uh, well, he kept telling me to to um, uh, what were the, what were the words? It was more like kind of like uh, release. I mean, just ease up on it. Don't don't try and make a big big powerful sound. Just relax it and 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 let let the voice relax and release on this higher notes. Ma 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 And that was up above my it was in my second bridge. We're actually my third bridge. And and then on the way down, something happened where it kind of like had this ring ping in my in my voice and I felt something different. And at the same time he said, There it is, that's that's it, you know. And we got done with that little series, and I said, what happened? I know something happened, but I'm not sure what. And he said, well, you finally let go of that extra squeeze you had on the on the on on the uh, on it, and the and the rest of the vocal cords kicked in. So as soon as I let go of that extra little squeeze, I. I had still in my voice, then the vocal cords really responded. Well, um, even when he said that, I didn't understand. I didn't understand. He said, you notice there's a deeper quality now. You know what I thought he meant? That I was somehow sounding deep, uh, you know, like a deeper voice. <laughs> but that's not what he was talking about at all. I'll tell you what happened. I, I took that, I took that recording and I had to, and I was getting ready for a gig. I was singing for the American Cancer Society in our state. Was honoring uh, a an individual who had who had cancer, had multiple surgeries, and was in a in a in a moment of remission. And they had a great big banquet for him. He was the former uh, um, president of the. Salt Lake uh, Chamber of Commerce and so forth, and a real pillar in the community. And I had been selected to sing The Impossible Dream. And so I was spending a lot of time preparing for this. And so I listened to this lesson over and over again. But, but I started to record myself because I began to, rec I thought I was recognizing what I was doing when he said, that's it, that's, you know, there it goes, that you've got it, you got it, you got it. And so I began to come, I began to record my practice to see if it sounded like what I had done in the lesson and, and see if I could reproduce it and start to start to do it on, on demand. And that all happened because I recorded myself practicing and compared it to um, um, what I had, what I thought I was hearing in the lesson I was taking. And in your case, if you're not studying with a teacher, you can compare it to what you're hearing in the teacher's voice, okay? Or in the demonstration. It's a very, very powerful principle, and that cemented my. So I'm snapping into the microphone here. Sorry, but that cemented my learning more completely then and I and I kept and it took me months to realize he wasn't talking about uh, depth of voice he was talking about that in my vocal folds that now I was getting deeper into the chord structure even just in my speaking so but particularly in the singing and so and this is, I'll, I'll give you another little thing that happened as a result of me recording and listening I began to realize that the way I was getting to this feeling, and this has to do with mix in my voice, the way it happens for me, by listening to my recording, I realized that I was thinking of it in two steps, this, this, this feeling that I was having. I was thinking release, and then in that next instant, kind of crescendoing or pressing into that release. So, so I'm thinking, let go, and then press into the feeling of letting go. That means nothing to you, probably, but it started making sense to my mind, 
and to the physical feedback I was experiencing and hearing. And I could hear it and feel it. And it led me to uh, getting more consistent strength in the bridge and all these other things. All of that because I recorded my practice session and listened back and and then would um, and then would try it again. I'd record myself doing the exercise again and then I'd listen back and record it again and listen back and comparing what, what I was doing and feeling. Uh, it's, it's very, very powerful and it's very, it's a very um, uh, reachable thing that you can do when you're on your own. Let me see. Tuchuk says, highest. George, Chuck, do you, do, I do have an app on my Samsung phone called Tempo Slow Mo. It does have a microphone icon on it. Yeah, uh, you know, I've got a, you know, I've, I've got an iPhone and the iPhone has a recording app in it. And that's what I, I've used that too in the past. Um, I like the eight MP3, so I don't have to uh, put it on my phone. Um, a little bit easier for me to download the MP3, but uh, you know, any kind of recording device, sometimes the computers, or like you can, if you have a Mac, you can record yourself on GarageBand. Um, any other suggestions, you guys, on recorders that you're, you've used? Phones are probably the biggest thing, I would think. Daniel Good says, could I ask, how do you raise or lower the larynx? Daniel, if you'll say, here's my larynx, see that little bump right there, or big bump. If you'll just say something like, um, duh, duh. Don't just say duh, duh. It doesn't move. In fact, it seems like it goes up. Duh. You have to say duh, duh. Really stupid. Duh. That lowers the larynx. It activates muscles below the larynx and actually pulls it down. Duh. It's like you're making fun of somebody. Duh. And so instead of saying duh, say gee. Keep that dumb sound and, and put it on an exercise. Gee or mum, mum. If I do it, a dumb mum. Mum, 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 mum. Notice how level that is. If I said, there's a, I'll take it to the high C. Mum, 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 mum. It went up a little bit, but it didn't go. <laughs> it didn't disappear up into my jaw. So it's a dumb sound that pulls the larynx down. The Jessica, Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Nice to have you here today. And uh, your emoji. His saint says that is brilliant, Chuck. Well, thanks. Uh, you know, it's just experience, you guys, and. It's going to, things are going to happen that are going to make a difference for you. And I'm just sharing what's really had an impact on, um, on my own learning. And it wasn't really, you know, it was on my own recording myself in practice. Uh, there are free recording apps I use. Okay. So great. Uh, Peter. Hi, nice to have you here. Um, okay. So. I got this this week from um, a comment on, on my YouTube channel. And it anybody who's making comments could probably find this comment. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give the name of um, well, there's not a name. It's just a some kind of a initial, but so here's here's the conversation we had. Uh, I'll get get to you in a second, Mark. Uh, so he said so it's it's good, it's going good. I'm getting all this, the sounds right, but I'm feeling discomfort in the back of my throat. Can't tell if that's if it's that bad that I should stop or if it's good for at least the exercise. And so this is one of the challenges, right? You're doing something on your own, you're practicing, but something isn't feeling right. And so it's it's great that, that um, you know he could ask me a question about this because I can't hear it. I'm kind of taking a stab in the dark, which is okay. I've had other similar experiences and I rely on a lot of things on my own. Here's what, um, 
I, I'll, I'll tell you, one time when I first started into this, uh, back in, this this is lessons in 2000, uh, I was going, I was gung-ho and I, I was, <clears throat> I had to travel an hour down and an hour back for some of my work that I was doing. And um, I was practicing, <laughs> I was practicing like, 30 minutes down, 30 minutes back and, 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 or twice down and twice, you know, I was just really going for it. And I, but after it was all done, it was like, oh my gosh, it was kind of like, uh, it wasn't like, it was kind of sore, like a muscle might be sore, you know, it wasn't like a sore throat where the lining of the, of your throat hurts, you know. Anyway, I went to my teacher and I said, gosh, you know, I do these exercises and I feel like it makes my voice so it makes it sore like a muscle. He says, he said, don't do it so hard. <laughs> and that's all he said. Don't do it so hard. So I followed his advice. I didn't do it so hard. And that meant I didn't do it as loud and I didn't do it as hard, you know. And uh, guess what? It resolved. So a general tip for practicing on your own is this. Don't practice loud. Now, when you're doing your exercises, rate your exercises on a scale of one to 10. 10 being the loudest possible and, and you know, one or zero being nothing. <laughs> Where would you say you practice at? You know, uh, just, just tell me right here. Give me a level, give me a dynamic level. Where do you practice, do you think? If you're there, Jessica, tell me what do you do you practice at a five? Do you practice at a seven? Do you practice at you know wh where do you feel like you're practicing in loudness on your own? Take a stab at it. Just tell me what you think. Uh, what at what level are you practicing? Because um, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you with that. Um, Let's say you practice at a six, okay? A six in volume. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to practice at a three. Or let's say you practice at an eight. I want you to practice your lesson or your vocal exercises at a four, okay? Let's say you practice at a 10, all out, full blast. Practice at a five. Peter, seven to eight. Um, Peter, try um, three and a half to four in volume, okay? CSI, eight. CSI, try it at a four. Literally, you guys, go in and cut the volume by half. Rate yourself. It's kind of score yourself. Because if I said, even if, even if I'm working with a student live and I say softer, they never, they never go by 50%. It's just a little bit softer. No. Go in and cut it by half. Mark says he's had a three. So, Mark, I don't think, you know, try it at one and a half. <laughs> If you're if you're accurate, it might be a little bit too soft. But if you're uh, underestimating your loudness, that might be just about right. Play with it and see. Why do I say practice softly or cut your volume in half? Because uh, in this situation, it's a quick fix. Um, I said to him, "Don't do it as hard or loud." because he was getting some soreness in the back of his throat. Reduce how loud you're doing the exercises by a half. See what happens. Um, and so, again, we're talking about doing this on our own, you guys. You, you, you're, you're going to be on the safer side of things. And guess what else happens when we reduce our loudness? Less muscle is involved. It's, it's okay to take down the volume a little bit. You, you, you're, you're not going to have to leave it there all the time, but you'll be surprised how well the voice balances out 
by just bringing the volume down a little bit. Or for now, started out at half as loud. Um, so thanks, CSI. This is good advice. Uh, Anna, hi Chuck, I'm having difficulty doing lip bubbles. Is there a trick or an easier way? Let me get back to that for a second, Anna. Let me just finish this last thought here. Um, so to, to continue this story, um, when I, I indicated he should try and reduce the loudness, then he wrote back and said, I'll try, but I tend to break when doing so. And isn't, that's probably one reason why we do it hard is because we don't want to crack or something, you know. So we feel like doing it loud is going gonna, is gonna to solve the problem. But it may actually be part of the problem. So in this instance, because I can't, I'm not listening to you sing, here's what I want you to do. Think about this term. Do it just loud enough to connect the tone. And maybe that's the problem. You can't do it, if you do it too soft, then it, it disconnects. So do it just loud enough to I'll keep the tone connected. The word is, the two words are, the indispensable minimum loudness, okay? The indispensable minimum loudness. Just enough to get the job done, but no more. You don't need more than that. That's a great rule of thumb when you're practicing on your own. The indispensable minimum. And so um, I just had him say, I just told him, it's just barely loud enough to maintain the connection. <clears throat> So then he wrote back and said, I can, uh, I, so I can, I still can do it, but I'm going into a headier mix. All right, so why was he doing it louder and harder? So his mix was stronger and more powerful. We all do that. We, we, we back off, if you back off the volume and everything gets a little bit softer, then you're thinking, oh my gosh, so I can never sing this way. I've got to go louder so I can get, but, Sometimes we've got to take that volume down to get the voice balanced in the right condition because all of a sudden it's, the exercises are easier, the connections are holding, the, you know, the tone's connected, you're not breaking, you're not feeling the tension, you're not getting sore. But now it doesn't sound as big and powerful. Here's another tip. Be patient. Allow yourself to be a little bit lighter than you think is good. Uh, there's a problem, and, and I guess this is another, another tip. Don't chase the sound all the time. Chase, rather go with the feeling. How well are you listening to your recording? How well are you matching the, um, the demonstration that you're trying to, to mimic and to try to implement in your own voice? Bring the volume down. And even if the result, resulting power isn't quite there yet, that doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. It just means it's going to take a little while and that, that strength will come. So he said, I said, concentrate on... So the problem he was feeling that he was causing by going softer was that the mix was getting headier. And... Um, he said, I can add some, if I add some air, and uh, I can hit a chestier mix. Not sure if in time I, I could hit a chestier mix if I practice the headier mix now. So <clears throat> don't be judging yourself. Do the, do the exercise as correctly as possible with the indispensable minimum of volume and, and um, just so that everything is balanced and comfortable. And the power will begin building in. Don't chase it. You don't need to chase power and bigness and loudness and, you know, all at once. Give yourself some time. If you're going to the gym and you wanted to get, get abs, you know, you got to be dieting, you got to be working, you got to be doing aerobic, you, you know, all these different things. Sometimes the really challenging and great stuff takes some time. So be patient. Be patient with yourself. The experience that I shared with you about um, about that discovery in my own voice that came from listening to my my own practice sessions that I was recording. I was um, this is that was back in 2011, uh, 2001. 
that was uh, well into 13, 14 years of working on the technique. Okay. I don't think you need to be as slow as me, <laughs> but I'm just saying that it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, it, it doesn't need to take that long, but okay. So let me back up and take, uh, so there's a, there's a couple good tips that I think will be of helpful, be of help to you. Don't always be chasing the sound necessarily. Chase the, uh, chase the feel, the balance, the, the bring the volume down, get everything so that it's very close to the demonstration you're trying to follow. Unless you're trying to follow a real loud, you know, demonstration It's hard to, that's probably why it's not such a great service to demonstrate, but you, you want to show the end product, but don't expect the end product, the first, your first practice session. You've got to give your, you're looking at, an, okay, so I give my Pavarotti story. He demonstrates an F. Oh. First he shows it's okay, but not good, or not elegant. Oh. He goes a little bit wide, and then he goes, oh. and he's got this great big, wonderful F above C. And he says, that might sound easy. Take maybe 10 years, 10 years for him to develop that. So be patient with yourself and it will come, but you want to do it correctly and in a balanced, with a balanced voice and not be chasing uh, a big sound that you hope comes overnight. Anne says, uh, difficulty doing lip bubbles. And make a frown, a big frown. Put your fingers where the frown is and lift up. Then see if that works. Make a frown. Put your fingers in the frown line and lift up. See what happens. Uh, Mark says, thanks. Got you. I will. Uh, Anna again says, I'll also, I also sound nasally. So Anna, the second thing is tip of your tongue behind your lower teeth while you're doing the bubble and don't move that tongue. Let that tongue relax. Don't pull it back. Don't lift it up. Leave the tongue relaxed right behind the lower teeth while you're doing that bubble. My bubbles go bad when I have a beard. And I discovered it's this, it's this right here. That hair right there stops my lower lip. So I do this, tongue trill. Hussein says, Chuck, uh, could I ask? I always struggle with my voice. Recently I found I suffer from a hyperactive thyroid. Anyway, past G above mid C, I lose presence and I'm really heady. What do I do? Uh, <clears throat> so Hussein, I would say number one, make sure E, F, F sharp is without any tension without any pull, without any, um, with, without any of the larynx, without the larynx coming up, E, F, F sharp. That's got to be like just right on the money. That will help the G more than anything else. And so I would make sure that I do the exercises uh, really, really well on E, F, F sharp. And, um, and I think you'll find that G will come around. It probably is less to do with an, with the thyroid than it is with the, um, with, there's a still a little bit of, a little bit of strain, a little bit of pull, maybe the vowel is going wider than you want. Um, and by getting that EFF sharp down really, really well, the G is going to come around. Now, Hussein, I should ask you, is it swollen? Is it swelling? Is it crowding your vocal track? Hi, Julie. I recognize you from a comment this week. Where can I practice? My apartment neighbors go crazy when I make loud sounds. Julie, do you have a car? Do you have an automobile? I have a student, I had a student in uh, New York who lived in apartments and he'd go down in our lesson. 
he'd take a lesson from me. He'd go and take the lesson in the car because he didn't want to bother people. And I think he had a, he was married. I think he had a child too. Didn't want to wake up the baby. Um, so so I, I have had students who practice in the car. I'd give a lesson one time. The guy was in a car on the beach. <laughs> um, you can practice outside. It's okay. But you again, you have to like escape from people. Do you live in a, a busy street or a busy city and you know, like New York City or something? It's hard to escape from people. Um, so, um, yeah, neighbors go crazy when making loud sounds, and that's a tough one. But so I would say practice outdoors if you get to a park for a walk, um, is a great, great thing. Now the bubble lip, um, is a, is a good one. And so that's, that works. I think you could probably practice in the car in a, in a uh, closet. And also, Julie, I don't know if you just joined us, but take the volume down by half. See what happens. You might find that that works really well too. CSI asks the question, which exercises strengthen the muscles? All of them or certain ones like the nay, nay, nays? All of them strengthen the muscles, CSI. And you want to do both the nay, nay, nay and the gee, gee, gee. The dopey, the dopey sound pulls it down. The nay, nay, nay pulls the larynx up, stretches the cords in a different way. You want to do all of them. Um, and because it's uh, like an all around workout. But I wouldn't do just one and to the exclusion of the others. That would be like exercising the quadriceps, but never, never doing anything with the hamstrings. Pretty soon you're not going to be able to run. So do them all. And I don't think you have to do them all every day, but do them, do one, one set one day and the, or do them all one day. It's, you know, it's up to you. Just, I wouldn't focus in on one exclusively. I, I continually, and even if there one's hard for you, someone said, I think the dopey sound was hard for them or, um, so, uh, do the nay, 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 but come back and do the dopey and keep coming back to the ones that are awkward for you. It's another tip when you're on your practicing on your own. Don't avoid the ones you can't do. You always want to be developing those so that they're good, they'll get easier and easier as you as you do them. Uh, yep, I am. Uh, well, I don't know. I'm old. Not sure about sexy. Uh, Anna says thanks. Not you, but okay. Oh come on. Uh, I'm talking to Chuck. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Julie, I try the car. Julie says yes, and I'm, I'm guessing that means you've got a vehicle. I I would definitely try the car now. If it's if you live in a, a cold area, it's tough. So you have to get, you go down, turn the heater on, or go for a drive or something. I you know I practiced in the car for years because I I was a tra I traveled a lot, and oh man, I got so many great hours of practice in the car. It actually I had to adjust. When I started teaching full time, oops, I was teaching full time and and uh, I stopped practicing because I wasn't ever in the car. <laughs> I always practice in the car, and nobody ever said anything to me. For a while, I was uh, uh, I was self conscious about it. Okay, you do have to uh, you have to get windshield wipers on the inside of your car. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> okay. Uh, CSI Julie, practice by blowing through a thick straw. Okay, so that's, you know, that's the same thing as the bubble lip. Or, or closing your lips over a tongue trail is a really quiet but very effective way of getting your voice going. <clears throat> but if you want to do exercises and like sing songs, I would, I, I think maybe the car might be a good shot for you. And you have to maybe stay out of the sun, you know, when it's hot. Um, Saints, wow, what time is it? We've got just a couple more minutes. The Saint says, I, I do get swelling. Yeah, some days it's hard to just speak. There's not much you can do about that. 
because you've got uh, an organ, you've got tissue that is crowding out your vocal tract. So if you can, I don't know, I don't know that, sorry, I don't know the treatment regimen that you're on or if there's something you can take to reduce swelling, but that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, I do get swelling and some days it's hard to just speak. I do live performances and my mix isn't ready for live singing. So I lightly, so is lightly stretching chest to, to G okay till I finally get my mix. You know, Hussein, um, I will say that you've got to do what your performance dictates. If you can do it without uh, straining and if you can do it as you've described, a little bit lighter, um, then just keep working on that mix till it comes. Because we've all been there, right? Where our technique isn't quite there, but we got to do the gig. We got to do it. So you, correct, you got to do that. Um, you can try different things, maybe to take some of the tension or pressure off. But um, yeah, so keep after that mix, but exactly. Just um, go in, go easy on it. Torsten uh, Benkenstein. Hey, nice to have you here today. Thanks to your tips and videos. Very good info. Greetings from Germany. Awesome. Nice to have you with us today, uh, Torsten. Uh, Saint says, also work on my E's and F's. You're probably right. Maybe I still have tension there. Uh, Hussein, it's, it's because I've been there. I know. I know what it's like. Could you answer resonance question at 4.32? Um, Mark, you're going to have to repeat that for me. Uh, so, uh, P-D-J-I-F-I-F-I-J, or whatever. How do you really access mix? It flips from chest voice, and from there I go into falsetto when I try to sing higher. Yeah, so what you need to do, step number one, is in the description below, um, RFB, I'll just say, in the description below RFB is a PDF that says get your vocal type. Get your vocal type and then take, uh, or get this uh, PDF. It takes you to a test that will give you your vocal type. And in your case, I'm guessing you're probably a pulled chest high larynx, which is causing it to crack into, into falsetto at the top. There are exercises for your vocal type the links are all there on the PDF. It'll take you right to it, save you lots of time. Exercises for the, your vocal type, and they will help you to stop pulling and stop cracking and flipping. Mark says, I really like humming and also doing a uh, siren while humming. You can do it anywhere while doing anything. It's good practice. Okay, Julie. Um, okay, you guys, I got to wrap it up here. I got students coming uh, in a few minutes. So thanks for a great session. I hope these tips have been helpful. You know, overall, you want to, um, you want to record yourself practicing. That's going to give you such direct feedback on what you're doing. Listen to yourself. Listen to your recording of yourself practicing. See if it matches up with what you're trying to do. Correct it. Record yourself again and go back and forth like that. I think you'll be surprised how much you learn from that. Take your volume down. Cut it in half. Um, and there are some other tips here that we, we mentioned. I, uh, I can't gather them at the, at the moment. Um, but these things will really make a difference uh, in, your, in your practicing. Uh, Dana, thank you.